there, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE live at VMware Explorer 2023, theCUBE's 13th year of covering VMware customer conferences. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. John, we've come from yeah. the keynote, lots of, lots of talk about multi-cloud, lots of talk about Gen AI, some big folks on stage. We're going to be digging into a lot about the ecosystem, which you know of VMware is incredibly yeah. important and deep. We've got two guests from Wipro here. Mahesh Chandra, the SVP and head of Full Stride Cloud, joins us. And Ramu Padmanaban, VP Full Stride Cloud Solutions at Wipro. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks you for having us. Give us a little bit of a background on each of you. Uh, Mahesh, we'll start with you and then Ramu will go to you. Thanks, Lisa. First of all, thanks for having us here. My name is uh, Mahesh Chandra. I head the Full Stride Cloud for Wipro for Americas. And I'm responsible for all the cloud business. Just 20 seconds on Full Stride Cloud. What it made about April 2023 of this year, we brought two of our key service lines, cloud and infrastructure services, and we brought digital and cloud together to give one integrated cloud to our customers, partners alike. And uh, you know, VMware is one of our key cloud partners. That's why we are here, to demonstrate our partnership in full scale. Good, we're going to dig into that. But Ramu, first, tell us a little bit about you. So let me, let me uh, go next, Lisa. So I go by Ramachandran Padmanabhan, but I think so it's pretty long, so I go by Ramu. Thank you. Right, and that's, that's what you can call me. Uh, and uh, as Mahesh said, I'm also part of the full stride cloud services team, but my job is to actually really drive client solutioning. So I make business value to our customers. You heard today in the keynote a lot about the ecosystems and how do you really bring in. So that's my job in Webpro. Work very closely with customers, with partners, and truly orchestrate and really bring business value. So that's my role. Yeah, Raghu has always been a great CUBE guest. He's been on theCUBE many times, even before he was CEO. He's a technologist, and yeah. seeing the CEO of NVIDIA up there, Jensen and Raghu, they're smiling they're like they're kids. Like, you know, they just <laughs> discovered something, and they're giving away a GeForce, you know, graphics card kind of throwback, and it's, it's memorabilia. I mean, we're at an age of tech where it's there. But one of the things I loved about Raghu's speech was, his focus of AI was awesome. We believe it's the same thing, but he laid out the waves. PC wave, going. this is our generation, right? PC wave, PC apps, apps. the web wave, web apps, and then he jumps to mobile, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> That's right. fair, mobile was a great ecosystem. Right. iPhone created the world of mobile apps, and then he has jumps right to AI apps. This is what's happening in the enterprise right now. Every single enterprise, sees departments, he laid out the chart up there too that showed the impact, not just a chat GPT consumer thing, there's real departmental across the board impact for every single enterprise. That means new apps are coming yep. and they got to land somewhere. This is a huge opportunity and, and a challenge as well. This is the market for enterprise um, AI, this is what you guys do. What's your reaction to that? You guys are like, okay, rolling in the, in the money, is it business good? I mean, it's got to be great for you guys. This is what you guys do. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It was a great keynote and you know, the, the six innovations which is coming, we are very excited by it. And actually we are also very honored and proud to be recognized by VMware and Raghu uh, you know, as a key partner. It means a lot to us. And uh, let me take one step back. You know, earlier this year, our CEO, Thierry Delaporte, as part of a journey to being a AI first organization, right? We want to become an AI first organization, you know, announce an investment of $1 billion, right? To actually, to do what? To actually, actually increase, you know, to our capability on AI, okay? As part of this, we have launched what is called as AI 360, which is an ecosystem that will bring together, you know, Wipro technology and our advisory across our four global business lines, platforms, research and development, and your IPs, along with partners and talent, all under one umbrella. That's the beauty of it, right? And how are we going to do it? You know, if you have our innovation hub, Wipro Innovation Hub, which we call it as Lab 45, we'll play a key part in it, okay? And as we speak today, you know, what we are doing is all the 250,000 employees of Wipro are getting trained and certified on Gen AI 101 and responsible AI. Okay, and this is very serious for us in terms of, you know, if you look at our CEO, the senior management, to an engineer, everybody is doing this course, everybody is excited, they're saying, hey, we have done it, because we believe Gen AI has that capability as well. I just want to touch upon, you know, John and Lisa, on our relationship with VMware, yeah. right? 
you know, it's very unique. And why do I say unique is... Well, hold on, before you start there, I want to just, just point out, you guys are recognized as the key partner. Yeah. And congratulations on that. Thank that you. shows for the work and the brand that is well recognized and it's on the charts and everything. So <laughs> congratulations, but explain more. How did you get there? What was the key to success? Yeah, so just start today, VMware has been there for 25 years, but our partnership with VMware has been for 21 of those years. Wow. It's been very successful. We have got go-to-market solutions together. We go together on the virtualization, on the cloud. As I said, they're a key cloud partner. So today, we are the number one partner for VMware for all Tanzu-based application modernized project, modernization projects. That's number one. We have over 500 plus joint clients together, okay? And on five of our FSC cloud centers, the full stack cloud centers, is actually built on VMC, okay? And as I said, we have a strong 21 years plus relationship, which is really built on trust, yeah. you know, executive level presence, and we have made some inroads in Kenya. Yeah. We have built some industry-specific use cases, and which are we are taking it to our customer. So we are a little bit ahead of the curve. And you know what? We are very confident. When Hawk mentioned that of the two billion, one billion will go to the partners. I think we are very strongly there to get a major share of it. So a strong, long-standing partnership, Hesh, as you talked about, 21 out of the 25 years of VMware's existence. It sounds like a deep, broad relationship. You talked about Gen AI, you've got some use cases there which we hopefully will get to, but Ram, I want to bring you back into the conversation and really get your perspectives on what enterprises are doing with Gen AI today. What do you think the next three to five years looks like? So, great question, Lisa. So, if I, if I really look at it, right, this year, 2023, has been the breakthrough year for a lot of us, right? If you look at every conferences that you go to, Gen AI has been the hot topic, right? And what happened? Obviously, the chat GPT that came into, everybody started utilizing it. We all started becoming the training to that public lang large language models, right? And truly, if you really look at it, that's all about in terms of how, as users, we are able to unearth the power of what AI can actually bring in. But is that something that the enterprises will truly get in? So let me unravel that, and you heard a lot in today's uh, keynote as well. If I really look at it, it is an ecosystem play, and we need to have a lot of the ecosystem players for enterprises to be successful. So let me, let me put that in perspective, right? Yeah. So if I look at the, the bottom of the pyramid is all your infrastructure and the, the orchestration vendors like VMware, that's where you have the large compute, storage, networking that comes in. You saw the power of uh, NVIDIA and VMware coming together. You have the AI chipset vendors that are truly bringing in the compute power of the GPUs that makes it much more easier, flexible for everybody to actually really look at it. Then you have the large language model providers. Now that's the brain behind a lot of the investments that will go in by enterprises because they want to make it much more private. They want to make it very unique to them. That addresses a lot of the privacy concerns that you actually saw today. Right, then you would have a next set of layers is where developers like us needs to get evolved and the engineering practices of looking at how can you use these AI practices into a truly looking at how to develop it, how to deploy it, how to monitor it, and how do you truly bring the responsible AI into practices. All needs to be laid a good foundation, and that's when you'll see the uniqueness of the applications, whether it is the horizontal applications that are larger in, in size that would be use cases that will be there for every large enterprises to adapt to it, or you would have vertical domain-led, right? Now, this domains like healthcare, you asked me a question around what kind of areas and where are we actually really looking at it, healthcare, CPG, manufacturing. So this is where you learn how unstructured data can actually really bring in. So in my view, the next two to five years is an inflection point. Uh, you would see that where many of those AI apps will actually be working in conjunction with the existing vendors that are going to be there. Yeah. Everything will be a maker checker model, right? Yeah. And that's where uh, it's going to be a very interesting time. Can you give an example of where the customers are at right now in their journey? Are they kicking the tires? Are they coding? Because you're seeing a lot of 
uh, acceleration, even in the startup world, for instance, as a comparison, right. it used to take 10 people to get the company a certain level, it started founders, and then you get the 10 people, mostly engineers. Now you can do three people, you're up and running. So the speed is there. Are customers that far along? Are they playing with it? What are their concerns? Is it more architectural scoping? What are some of the uh, activities that customers are going through right now? So I, uh, in my view, uh, John, customers are today in their labs looking at the right use cases that are there. So we're looking at every enterprises, wherever there are large volumes of data, that's, that's going to be there. Uh, we're actually working very closely with our customers, basically. So we have these AI labs that you have, where we built in a lot of use cases. Good amount of knowledge miners are already available <laughs> now, right? So we're actually focusing on that. And this is not something yeah. new that's happened this year. Yeah. As a company, we've been there, and Mahesh will talk a little bit more about some of the work that we've been doing with our customers, as well as some of the researches that we're actually trying to do about it. But to, to briefly tell in terms of where the yeah. customers are leading to, uh, this year will be where we are actually putting the foundationals in place. Yeah. A lot of architectural decisions, in my view, will happen in the next yeah. six to eight months, basically. I'm sure you guys probably can't talk about the uh, intellectual property, but you guys are known for executing operational workflows on behalf of customers. Right. I'm sure you're using AI in internally to, to go faster. Oh yeah, because just add to what Ramu was saying, the technology is there. Because I work with a lot of banking customers, they know their technology <laughs> very well. But it's the productionization of it, similar yeah. to what we had, the self-driving cars. The technology was there 10 years back, but how do you bring it into production? It takes time. So I believe, yeah. you know, when it comes to Gen AI, the technology is very much there. I think we got to take it responsibly. I think that's where I think Ramu said the next two to three years is going to be key. So I think, uh, you know, it's going to be very exciting as we, you know, embark on this journey as well. Definitely not a dull moment. Mahesh, can you double click on something that, that Ramu was saying in terms of the work that Lucra is doing with customers? How are you working together with them on Gen AI use cases? How are they really helping to influence the direction that Lucra is going with respect to Gen AI? So it's in two aspects, right, Lisa. One is, if you had, you know, go back about 10, 15 years back, automation was a very big thing. And there's a lot of automation platforms came, the tools came. But what is important is the use cases. The way approach we're also doing is, we are working with a lot of our partners and customers building their use cases, right? Because if you have a right use case, that is when they can see productivity, that is when they can see innovation. That is one fact we are doing. And just head back to what Ramu was saying, for any enterprise to be successful in Gen AI, you got to look at the four layers of the stack, you know? And I'll tell you why Wipro is uniquely positioned, you know, in the Gen AI journey and where our relationship with VMware is going to succeed in Gen AI as it has done in the cloud and other things as well. If you look at the foundation layer, as Ramu mentioned, it is about compute, storage, network. So we have great relationship with hyperscalers. And, and hyperscalers, as well as orchestration like VMware, we have a lot of solutions where we have gone to the market and together, and we will continue to do it. And then you have your model players. What do they do? They are the one who are actually giving access to your, both your commercial as well as your open source you know, foundation models, right? Like your NVIDIA as well. So NVIDIA is a customer of ours. They have a partnership with us. So we play a key role in that as well. Then you go one level up the stack is where your AI engineering is coming. This is where you know, the entire model engineering, the model life cycle comes, where we're going to deploy, where we're going to do development into Gen AI models. And Wipro, you know, over the last few years, because we have invested heavily in AI, and now with the new investment from our CEO, we are going to build a lot of capabilities and practices, and we will be at the forefront of this. And lastly, I mentioned about the Gen AI apps. You said, like what Raghu said, moving from one to the other. Yeah. So we have a lot of institutional knowledge in the apps, we will ensure the use cases are relevant to customers and we take those Gen AI and harness it to the customer. That's where we play a unique role and our partnership with VMware will definitely take us to the next level. Yeah, that's a great point about that whole ecosystem and the partnership with VMware that you have. You know, one of the things that Ragu didn't put on the chart was the cloud apps, but I can understand he's an on-premise guy. <laughs> I get that. I would have put a cloud apps in there, but Gen 1 cloud apps, we say Gen 2's here. If you look at the API, what clouds did for APIs, I see a similar thing with AI, and this comes back to the ecosystem and remember your piece, which is the technology. LLMs and foundational models will be data-driven, 
because data is AI. Yeah. So data and APIs, people sharing data, the role of ecosystems, not just VMware, but connecting things. If you look at the LLM model, it's not one model to rule the world. We reported that yeah. first, and now that everyone's agreeing, that's basic obvious now. You got different LLMs. The on-premise dynamic with data is there. You got public cloud AI, which is use cases for that. Edge is going to have some action next. Runtime is the multi-cloud. That's mm -hmm. what was set on stage. So remember, what's, what's, the, what's the LLM picture look like? Because explain like, because you got hyperscalers have LLMs, you got proprietary LLMs, you got open source LLMs. How do you guys look at that? How do you advise customers about the LLM power dynamics or the, we call it the power law. No, absolutely, and I think that this is where uh, a lot of our uh, work, right, as uh, I would call them, we call ourselves now as an orchestrator now, not as a system integrator, right? Because the whole focus is about composability and how do you actually create this engineering to figure out as to which is the LLM that I will have to really be adapting. Because as, as what you saw today in the keynote, the four key aspects of it, right? Is it about in terms of the choice of the model? It is about the cost, it is about the performance, and how do you make it affordable as well, right? So if you can, if you really look at it from that perspective, as you rightly said, a lot of researchers happened on the public LLMs that's now becoming commercialized. You would have a lot of R&Ds that are going on with an open source LLMs that are there. But truly, if enterprises needs to be having those huge data sets to be thrown, we need to have proprietary LLMs that would be there. Now these proprietary LLMs needs to address and guardrail a lot of it. And to that, John, if you really look at it, we're trying to create that decoupled model. We're trying to make sure that as an engineering practice, we have the ability to choose. And for us, this is not, this is not new. As a company, we've invested in AI 10 years back, basically. The last four or five years, even before the open AI came to the market, we've been working with Academy in terms of really building algorithms that addresses that, right? Yeah. With the University of South Carolina, we've done a lot of in investments with Indian IITs, basically, right? And we've tried to bring together all of this in, in, in place. So, so that's yeah. where I see LLMs becoming yeah. that linchpin, I call it, right? Yeah to make an enterprise successful, basically. Well, just add one analogy, if you sure. don't mind, right? You spoke about multiple LLMs, and I'll also say how a player like Wipro, being on the AI engineering, can help. I'm talking about fine tuning. Yeah. So we had two models. One is your GPT-4.0, and then you had your POM-2. And then the use case was created, I can't get to specific, but I'll just give you a very high level, is when you did your prompt, GPT-4 is a success ratio when it generated the content was 76%. Whereas on POM, it was POM 2.0, was like 16%. A little bit of fine tuning, guess what the success ratio went to? 86%. Yeah. That's the beauty of what fine tuning, and that's where I think we will play a key role. Good point. Excellent. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on the program today, talking about Wipro, what's new there, what you're doing with VMware, and why this partnership with respect to Gen AI, it's going to be really attractive to customers. You said you have 500 joint customers now, I'm sure that's only going to grow. We thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE today, guys. Thank you, thanks for having us. Thank you very Our much. Our pleasure. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. For our guests and for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. Stick around, there's more great content coming from day one of our live coverage of VMware Explorer. We're going to be talking with VMware executives, partners, customers, analysts, you name it. Don't go away. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.